Hello, true believers. This is Doc Hogg, and welcome to episode 45 of Comics and Variety. If you like this channel, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos, and for the sake of YouTube's search algorithm, please do hit the like button. Alrighty, today we have another video from our friend and contributor, Mike, the Bloody Red Baron. 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 Okay, cool it, ladies. Okay, today Mike is going to give us part one of rules for writing comic books, so let's get to it. Okay, we're here with Mike Barron, and he's going to share more about, well, I'll let him say what he's going to share about. Hi, folks. A lot of people ask me, how do you make a comic? Well, you sit down and start drawing. Uh, and if you look at a lot of comics, that's just the way they happen. They're stream of consciousness efforts. Uh, you look at uh, a lot of R. Crumb's work or any of the great underground cartoonists, and they obviously just sat down, they stared at a blank page, and, and then a whim came into their head, and they drew that whim, and they followed it panel by panel. Uh, I take a more scientific approach, and when I teach uh, comics or writing, the first lesson is, what is your story about? And when somebody asks you that question, you have to be prepared. You can't hem and haw and say something about an alternative universe and orcs and wizards and then delineate the powers of your character. You have to have a hard little nugget that entices the reader, that makes him want to read the story. And you have to prepare ahead of time. And I'll give you a couple of examples. I have a novel that's about Nazi biker zombies. That's just three words, but it does the job. For a certain demographic, that's all you need. Other stories require more, such as my novel, Florida Man. Gary Duba's having a bad day. There's a snake in his toilet, a rabid raccoon in the yard, and his girl Crystal's in jail for getting naked at a waffle hut and licking the manager. So Gary sets off with his best friend, Floyd, to sell his prize, Barry Bonds' rookie card, to raise the $500 for bail. But things get out of hand. Uh, if someone were to ask you, what's Moby Dick about? What's the Grapes of Wrath about? Think about that. What would you tell them to make them want to read the book? Lesson number two is you can draw your page out panel by panel and proceed like a snail in the dark. And in fact, when I first started writing comics, Nexus, Flash, Punisher, Badger, that's what I did. I just draw a page on, on uh, a legal sheet, I'd break it up into panels, and I'd stare at that first panel and I'd say, how to begin this story? How do I grab the reader by the throat? That's always my goal, and it should be your goal, too. So you start with an interesting premise, an interesting question, and once you lay that down, it forces you to think about the essential question in all fiction, which is, what happens next? If you have a good sense of story dynamics, you can write a whole comic like that without outlining beforehand. If you have a sense of where it begins, where it ends, and what's in the middle, you can work it out panel by panel. Uh, the risk of this method, of course, is it may cause you to backtrack uh, many times, especially once you create a credible character, uh, and that character turns on you and tells you what he's going to do next. Uh, but I have nothing against that method of storytelling. My methods have changed drastically since then. They've become, I would say, a little more scientific. But it's not a bad method of learning how to create a comic. And one of the reasons is it forces you to think about what happens next. It also teaches you how much dialogue uh, and captions a page will comfortably bear. Uh, and it also puts you in sympathy with the artist who's going to have to follow your layouts uh, to produce the finished art. Uh, now a lot of people can't draw at all. They just, you know, they, they can't even do stick figures. So that's out for them. But for those with a little drawing ability, it's not a bad way to do a comic. How long should your story be? Well, a story is as long as it, it needs to be. But in my experience, you can tell a lot of story in 24 pages. And that doesn't mean padding. It doesn't mean reams of dialogue. It just means you can tell a lot of story in 24 pages because each page is completely plastic. You can devote it to a single issue, a single image, or you can break it up into panel after panel. It's, 
old timers know and those who've looked at old Marvel and DC Comics, old Marvel comics used to consist of uh, nine symmetrical panels per page, page after page. That's the way Stanley liked it. Now, there were always exceptions to these rules. There are exceptions to every rule. But it didn't harm the storytelling because there was, for the most part, it was good writing. All righty. Thank you very much, Mike. We will have part two of this video in a day or two. And that music means that it is time for Hogg's Headlines, all the news that Doc Hogg wants to report on. Dateline, Gabby Rivera Part 2, because one cancellation is never enough. Gabby Rivera, the Bronx-born queer Latina writer uh, who wrote the young adult novel Juliet Takes a Breath, and was later hired by Marvel to write um, the comic book America, Marvel's first Latina lesbian superhero. America sold so poorly that uh, it was canceled after 12 issues, but for some, apparently, failure is the new success. So, Gabby Rivera has been hired by Boom Studios to write a new comic book entitled BB Free. Here is the description of this comic book from SJW Gabby Rivera. Quote, years after the plague that ate greed, wiped out the ultra-rich, B.B. Free and her dad live in a small, close-knit community in the Florida islands where everything is shared and everyone's got each other's backs. B.B. is getting to be a teenager, though, and she's starting to get more and more interested in the world beyond her swamp. For now, her only tie to the outside world is her radio show. But when she discovers a secret so large it could tear her family and entire community apart, B.B. realizes that, that there's a lot her father's not telling her and she might just have to head out into the world on her own to find the truth. Gabby Rivera herself describes this, uh, this comic as a, quote, post-climate change America twist. And as you can see here, this comic book will no doubt have all of the nuances and subtlety of a cinder block to the face. I, you know, I look at these sorts of things, and as, as I asked you know, when Marvel just recently hired Zoe Quinn, does, does anyone do any research? I mean, look at these, look at these numbers here. You know, these are, the, these are the order numbers for her comic book America, uh, and it just, you know, the sales just plummeted after, after uh, you know, month one. Um, you know, there was one exception in there in, in October of 2017. I'm not, not sure how to explain that. My guess is they did a lot of advertising. Uh, Marvel did a lot of advertising for the comic book America and other comic books leading up to, to October. Uh, but obviously, I mean, that's my guess. I don't know if someone can, can uh, you know, put it in the comments, uh, a, a better explanation for that, please do. That said, uh, obviously, ad space is limited, so they can't keep that up. And once they couldn't, you know, right down again in November. And by the time it was canceled, you know, they were selling less than 20% of, of what they were uh, originally selling, um, or at least what comic book stores were ordering. So, you know, I've, I've got to wonder, does, did, did Boom Comics do any research here before hiring Gabby Rivera? And I was at a loss until the, uh, the being that puts up the red letters in these videos explained it to me. Alrighty, that's all for now. Until next time, have a very nice day. Oh, and I uh, forgot to mention, for those of you who are into gambling, there are sports books in Vegas that are now uh, taking odds on which will last longer, Gabby Rivera's new comic book or the uh, marriage of Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth.